So shout out old people. Um, we love you. We love you here at Croak and Crow. We will never abuse you. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the Croc and Croc podcast. <laughs> How you doing? I'm Spencer Cardia. Ooh. Uh, I'm Nimu. Nimu? Mm-hmm. Is that a real thing? Yes. And this here is Frank looking fabulous. I am uh, off my game today. I forgot to even say my name. You, f- you forgot to say the name of the podcast. The croak and Crow. How about that? Try that Try that on for size. You used to make the crow sound. Ah! <laughs> I don't even know if that's what a crow makes. A crow crows. I think it's more like Oh yeah. Ah. Uh, High higher pitched. Quack. Yeah, that's it. Quack. Yeah. Quack. Quack. Yeah, not yeah, but it is deep. It's not like a seagull is more. <laughs> that's more like a seagull. All right. Um now that we weeded out 99% of people wanting to listen to this peacefully, how are the rest of you doing? It is a beautiful day, a beautiful day to be podcasting, a beautiful day to be alive quite frankly mm-hmm. um we're all here we all made it through the weekend thankfully it's wednesday yeah oh. <laughs> it is so we made it we made it through the weekend and some we did we made it through the weekend and there's grueling mondays and tuesdays and we're making it through the strawberry moon you know what's nice about starting on a wednesday i know i always talk about wednesdays but you know what's nice about taking monday and tuesday off who needs it what is so the hump so wednesday is called hump day yeah and you're ever like uh, riding your bike mm-hmm. and anytime you're going down a hill, mm-hmm. you're like, I just have to go back up a hill. Yeah. The nice thing about Wednesdays, we're just getting like teleported oh, right. to the top of the hill. We're shooting down. You're right. And then we disappear until we're back at the top of the hill. Yeah. It's kind of just like like the perfect roller coaster yeah. where you're only ever going down. Wait, it's like a fast. It's like the ball return at the bowling alley. Yes. The ball return is <laughs> those days that we're not podcasting. You don't got to retrieve it. I am Nimue, or it's it's pronounced different ways in um in in Japan, all the different countries. Okay. Nimue and Nimu, uh, N I M U E, and she is the Lady of the Lake in the King Arthur tale. Uh, the 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 lake is Avalon, and, okay. and the Lady of the Lake is Nimue, and is so she like a mermaid, um, or a little no, more she's a person mystical th- than that. I think she might be. Is she bad? She might be bad. Well, I feel like I feel like all kind of folklore of a person of a lake is usually <laughs> bad. Well, the Poseidon was good, right? Oh, I don't know if he was good, but I mean, I, I think he was like a he wasn't Hades. Yeah, I don't know. I told you a million times I don't know those um, fairy tales, but They're not fairy tales. <laughs> Poseidon. Yeah, He's, mythology. That's what I meant. I think of mythology as a fairy tale, isn't it? No, because is... people believed in mythology. I think fairy tales are more of like. Hansel and Gretel. Okay. But they're probably based on mythology. Hansel and Gretel? Yeah. Probably. No. Probably. I think the Grimm brothers made them up. Um, I wanted to say something. A lake burst is is Celtic mythology. Oh. And um, they believe that these lakes appear um, usually when a grave is being dug and it's, 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 it's otherworldly, supernatural, you know. Not everyone. It's it's like mythology we just talked about. So like the, like certain lakes are saying, oh, that wasn't there before. That was a lake burst, yeah. Oh, you know what a it starburst is? Burst. One of my favorite snacks. Oh, I thought you meant the real one. There's probably a real one, right? A real starburst? Yeah. Well, it's like an explosion of a star, a starburst? Yeah, probably. Starburst. I'm sure they did. I'm sure the candy company didn't invite invent the name. Maybe they did. I don't know. I only like the orange and yellow ones. I was at my job. Starburst, the square things. I was at my job today. I like now and later's they're better than Starburst. They're hard. Ooh, really showing your age there. Yeah. Do they still make those? Um, in the specialty stores. Um, I, I can't really talk. I butterscotch is my favorite candy. Hmm. That's about as old as it gets. That and those uh little little strawberry candies. As a matter of fact, I think they have now and later at Wawa. Do they? Yeah. Yeah, they also have cow tails at Wawa. Yeah. Who's eating cow tails? You? Never. <laughs> never. No, never. I'm sorry. I was picturing all the, I was picturing the candy. You got shows. lost in the candy aisle in your head. <laughs> um, what is a cowtail? Wawa doesn't have now and later's. Wawa has chewy sweet tarts, which I also enjoy. And that's what I, I think was it, getting they, confused. They have Laffy Taffies. I don't like that either. I, I confuse those two. The now, the now and later's are, are tart. Um, so I forgot what everything that happened. We're talking about cowtails. <laughs> I don't want to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what is a cowtail? I think it's self caramel, right? Oh, 
That's a, that sounds pretty uh, unegregious. But yeah. So like, and I could be wrong. Just in my mind, I think it's you know that kind of caramel that breaks. It's like so soft. It's kind of fudgy. Like it kind uh, of breaks. Yeah. I think that's what it is. Okay. Interesting. So that wouldn't have been my cup of tea. I was more into that kind of sweet How about prunes? tart. Um, prunes? Yeah. It's the, National Prune Day. No, thank you. I've never had a prune, so I, I can't really talk about it. I will not. What was a prune before it pruned? A plum. A plum. Yeah. Not very popular, are they? You hear, like, They're very hard on your stomach. That's why. Are they? Mm. Yeah, yeah. You don't really hear about anyone eating a old plum. Like back in... Oh, plums? What was like... What was like? Well, you said prunes weren't popular. Plums are plums aren't hard on your stomach. Well, but I'm saying, do you ever hear someone about like eating plums? Why? I'll tell you why. Okay, they're very hard to get a good one, so you don't want to waste your time or money trying to figure it out. Oh, uh, it, like apples, you'll just grab an apple. You just It'll grab be an fine. apple. You just grab an orange. Just grab a banana. A plum can be very, very tart. Talk talk about tart. I said I like uh, tart candy. Okay. The plum can be. Very tart, and that's not fun. And is a good plum worth the weight? Not really. I feel like the skin is thick. Yeah, I've never had a plum. I don't really like fruit, so I'm not that adventurous with uh, okay. with the fruits. Yeah. Um. Okay, I learned a lot today. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's National Elderly Abuse Day. Elderly abuse. Yeah, so if you have a grandfather who's really getting on your nerves, yeah. today's a, it's like sort of like the- uh, oh, you're, It's like a amnesty. Yeah, it's like the purge, but it's old people. Like like that- the, Nursing. This is, this is not true. This is not true. Um, it is elderly abuse awareness day. Right. Because it's a real problem. Right. The elderly. Uh, is it? I'm saying right. But I've never known any in my life, my long life. I've never known an elderly, an abused elderly person. Thank you, God. Consider yourself one of the lucky ones. Okay. And more than the lucky ones. And thank you for saying that. Okay. Thank you for saying okay. that. Okay. You're welcome. That exactly is why there is a problem. Okay. And you don't have any parents. Never had. <laughs> <laughs> you were born in a factory. Yeah. People who have elderly people in their lives don't know. And that is the problem. You send... It happens a lot. Oh, you're so trusting. It happens a lot in um, in homes. Okay. And you might have a, a, a no-no. And, and when you say homes, everyone has a home. You, you, mi- you, mean, an el- uh, you mean an old folks home. Yeah. You might yeah. have an oma, opa. Okay. I think that's German. How you say grandma and grandpa? I thought that was Japanese. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> and uh, and you know they, maybe oh they have dementia. Put them in their home. You trust. Those doors are locked. Some of the people that work there are not very nice. Aww. And they'll pinch them and because you can imagine like this is a problem. Yeah. Elderly people are like kids. Yeah. Where. Uh, there's certain people that aren't really meant to be working with them. Right. And for those people, they can, it's a lot. Right. And it could be frustrating. It could be frustrating. And someone who is not as morally sound as you and I will cut corners. And it went on for a long time without anyone even really knowing. You're right. Okay. Because, yeah, maybe they're not even able to report it. Yeah. They might have dementia or they might report it and then just be, oh, Jerry. Yeah, they don't have you, any. You and your complaint. They don't have any, con- lady, always they don't have any contacts, me. right? But um, yeah, I feel like in recent years it's been reported and cracked down on, and um, so it's for people like you who's like, I've never heard of it. It's happening. It's still happening, and um, the and el- the elderly are so those are part of one of those groups in society that um sometimes need outside help because yeah. they can't really help them. It, obviously, you can imagine if you're being taken care of, it means you can't, can't take care of yourself in physically, right? but also in... Hopefully, this will get less and less as time goes on because we still have old people. The old people of today are still from a time like before the internet, before mm. um, a child abuse hotline, yeah. before the Me Too movement. Yeah. So the old people today probably they're unaware that you can't you don't ha- you don't have you, first of all it's unacceptable that you don't have to be treated and you don't have to be treated that way in all kinds of but which as ways. time goes on the young people of today will be the old people and they will know more yes precisely and that's why we're celebrating the holiday yeah it's um or it's against aware. it's against god i think that i think there's a proverb about respecting um white hair yeah and well once again i i think yeah, a lot of the Bible talks about kids a lot, but like yeah. part of this this 
taking care of you know the the needy and stuff and, and being like there because that's what selflessness is right like yeah the bible is all about selflessness and taking care of, of those who need help and um not just being a fit person in your middle years between ages of 20 and 60 part of that responsibility of being mentally and physically fit is being capable of helping those around you right who can't help themselves especially the elderly which i i do feel sorry not sorry for i have a lot of compassion maybe more than kids i love kids no i don't yes, you do. i do i'm, I'm actually going to be a counselor in a camp soon but we'll talk about that later okay. um old people i think people forget that they are not incapable meant like how do i put this they could be incapable. <laughs> kids are kids uh oh, like just once they grow up they'll figure it out right old people were not born old and oh right. i'm a sweet little old man it's right. like with these that, limitations it, it, it's literally like so like I, I i always try to have like a mental thing where i imagine everyone well i do a thing where i imagine everyone as kids okay. um but old people it's like Imagine that, like, imagine just me being an old person's body. You think my brain's going to change one day? And like, well, now I'm cute and old. Right. It's like, that's still Spencer. Yeah. And now he just can't move as much. Right. Uh, he, he forgets things. And it's like, it's almost like you like you want to go more out of your way to help them and make sure they're not going through things because age takes a hold of everyone, right. but it's they're still the same people. Right. Yeah, and they're they're progressing. They're losing as they go forward. Where a child is gaining. Yes. Um, so shout out old people. Um, we love you. We love you here at Croak and Crow. We will never abuse you. <laughs> the only people we abuse are the ones that are made of silicone. Yes. So that's Frank and all the women in Beverly Hills. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke for the old people. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Shout out old people. National Megalodon Day. What? Megalodon. Is that a is that the name for the old people or is this a new No, day? Megalodon is like I think it's like a prehistoric shark. Oh. Yeah, big boy. Big boy. You ever see a person next to a Megalodon? I was there's a museum somewhere. It might be the Camden Aquarium. And they have this huge shark that hangs from the ceiling. Um might like be a Megalodon. It might be cuz it's it takes the you know the whole length of this huge uh room and um uh, is it a skeleton? I don't know. But I just remember it, it was really, really, really big. And big. I'm pretty sure it was a shark. Maybe that's what it was. Yeah. Or like, I've seen things where you ever just, just see the jaws of it. Yeah. And it's like, whoa, there was a whole fish around there? Yeah. Um. Okay. I'm just going to rifle through some of these. Uh, National Steel a Kiss Day, which I think is pretty behind the times. Steal a Kiss? Steel Hopefully a kiss. that's a Hershey's Kiss from Hershey's, Pennsylvania. No. Do you, ever, do you feel like kissing your partner? Today is the perfect for sneaking in a kiss. It's kind of frowned on these days. Yeah. Um, how about ask for a kiss day? Even even with your partner, I think you should not steal a kiss. Steal a kiss. Don't steal a kiss. You know what? What if they had COVID? That's true. What if the other person just didn't want to kiss you? You know, you can be a partner with someone mm -hmm. and they don't, they're not ob obligated to always have to kiss you. You're right. <laughs> you know, right. it's like, ah, gotcha. It's right. like, oh, I'm so happy that I'm stuck with you for the rest of my life. Yeah, and I'm and I'm guessing that um, it's cute. Maybe we're being cynical, but I'm guessing that you could. Yeah, all right. I won't even go. Oh uh, yeah, we're, I we're, won't even go forward. We, we got we got I'm a little done. we got we got a little worked up all from right. thinking about old people getting bullied. Yeah, we didn't we can't, want no we, stealing kisses. We no can't let our, our cynicism. All right. Um, continue. Steal a kiss, but oh, how cute! Aww. Kiss a baby. It doesn't have to be your partner. Gosh, gotcha. yeah. Kiss it's a little surprises. We love surprises. Kiss a statue. Like, we love love. Oh man. Um, that's it. There's other days, but look them up. How about that? Don't kiss a statue. I think it might be illegal. National Photography Day. Take a picture of you stealing kisses from random people. That'll get you locked up quick. <laughs> <laughs> I just watched a Netflix show. Um, it's called L.A. something. L.A. Choppers? No. L.A. Chopper? Motorcycles? No, it's not motorcycles. It's more like tattoos and photography. That's why. And it's this, this, this man who... He kind of went around with this famous tattooer uh, whose name was Cartoon. And he photographed, if you see these photographs, old photographs of like Eminem and things yeah. and everything. And um, uh, he's a photographer, so we can celebrate him. I forget his name. Estevan, maybe. Um, but uh, he said it's hard, you know, for the older photographers who 
they're not media savvy, you know? Yeah. Everything's different with digital. He used a camera, 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 yeah, you know? Yeah, I know. It's sad. Um, I took a, I took a photography class. Collegiate level. Okay. But um, photography, unfortunately, with technology, is yeah. becoming a lost art. And photographers, do not come at me and say, it is still an art, how dare you? But... I'm defending the elderly right now. Okay. You young photographers, don't you abuse the old photographers. But like before it was a skill, like a trait, like yes. knowing how to use dark rooms and stuff. Right. And um, you know, your picture, it was like you, you captured it and, and it had the right exposure and stuff. Now you get these modern cameras. Right. And like, like you said, so much of it is, you know, you see TikTok trends of photographers. It's because they found like a niche. It's like, Oh, like right. let's go, let's go. It's like for these traditional photographers, it's almost like it's becoming more of a hobby. Yeah. And then for the new people, they're making it work. Yeah, but, I was um, trying to take a picture. Um, the iPhone corrects your color for you. Well, and yeah. I see the yeah. sun. I saw the sun coming through the trees. I wanted to. Rep- I wanted that every time I push, it lit the whole th- yeah thing up, and I was like, iPhones. Um, you know, you have both. You have an Android and an iPhone, but iPhones. So I used to always be for Android because the Androids are better for someone who is willing to learn and work through it. Yeah. Right. Like Androids, I know that the new ones, they give you just like a photographer, all the settings. Like you get exposure, you get the other ones yeah, and all that. Where iPhone, it's the best point and shoot camera. But yeah. then you can't do anything different. You can't do anything different. And, and a, you can't get some of the photos you want to get. Yeah. So that's the same as like, that's like sort of iPhone across the board. It's like, you'll always be content, but you'll never be able to do anything no. like out of the ordinary. Right. Where Androids, it's like, the problem is sometimes you just want to be ordinary. And it's like, I don't care about the exposure. I don't care about the shutter shutter speed. Yeah. Just give me a photo real quick. So hey, it's give and take. It's give and take day. How about that? Um, anyway, guys, we're just rambling on. We have a lot to talk about. We've had five days to think about it. But um, today's Wednesday, June 15th. Man, 2022. Feels like just yesterday. It was 1997. Um, <laughs> today's Wednesday, guys. And on Wednesday, we have a little special thing. Every day we have a special thing. But Wednesday's special thing is One Word Wednesday. As on One Word Wednesday, we uh, pick a word from the English Dictionary. And um, we talk about it. We kind of just use that word as inspiration for all the other words that come out of our mouth after that, Mm -hmm. both uh, physically, spiritually, metaphorically, and most of all, laboratorily. Laboratorily. So um, what are we talking about today? Let me guess. Okay. You talked a lot about uh, ladies and Avalon. My name is usually... uh, All things, but um, it all revolves around the good old lake. You're right. That's the word. Lando Lakes. You're right. Lake. Lake. A lake is a body of water that is separated from the rivers and the streams, but it is fed from them underneath the ground somehow, unless it's an artificial. Ar- artificial oh, is that lake. how it works? Yeah. So it's, it's, that's why it's not stagnant. You know, an artificial. I was wondering. I never knew how lakes worked. I always thought it just had to keep raining. Otherwise, the lakes would dry up. No, that's probably more like a pond, like maybe a pond or... So lakes are good to go. Lakes are good to go. I mean, uh, like, albeit maybe there was like a huge drought. Yeah, I mean, rivers dry up too. Yeah. But um, a lake is fed from... The underground the water system. The underground systems. water system. Huh. It has to be. Otherwise, it would be like... It wouldn't be able to sustain itself with right. uh, the um, water cycle. Yeah. Learn a lot about the so water artificially cycle. they can do it. I don't know how that maybe it sounds like a swimming pool. I don't know what that is. But um do you know what Michiana Michiana is? Michiana? Does that have to do with Michigan? It does. Okay, well Michigan has two great lakes it's butted up against. I'm from Pennsylvania and so I didn't know this, but you know, the people refer to this Michiana, Michiana. Michiana just means that it's um northern Indiana and western and southwestern Michigan. So it's the area of ah, okay. Michigan and Indiana, yeah. Michiana. Is there a Great Lake there? Yeah, of course, Lake Michigan. Oh. And Lake Michigan is considered the lake that holds the most deaths among the Great Lakes. Understandable. Really? It's, it's so big. Oh, you, and, know, you know about Lake Michigan? Well, it's it's one, it's so big, and but two, more importantly, 
it's butted up against all the states. So everyone who's going, you know, drowning in Chicago oh, yeah. and drowning in Michigan are all. And have you ever seen it? No. Neither have I. No, <laughs> I can just imagine. No, I've never seen it with my own two eyes, but um, it's, it's like an ocean. You would never yeah. know by looking at it that I'm looking at a lake that has land all around it. Right. It's vast. There's waves. Right. There's beaches. Right. Currents. Currents. There's because cur- that's what here, part of the deadliness is the um is the current. Yeah. And um, yeah, the geometry. Yeah. Of, well, I the, wonder. Yeah. I wonder if people are a little bit more reckless on old lake michigan yeah it, not treating uh, it like a city you're correct it says that um that it, it the warm welcoming water is a favorite swimming yeah. spot and then you don't realize that people uh, obviously you're going to die you know, i day. think it probably doesn't even come on the radar of ocean deaths but i feel like there might be a little bit more of a certain respect to the ocean right where it's like hey you want to go yeah. on a day in the lake is different than you want to go into the deep sea right Huh. And I wonder if the ocean spits you out more than the lake does. Like the ocean is constantly like, you know, you boogie board. Like I'm wonder. I don't know about the currents of a lake because the ocean, you know, the ocean works a certain way. It's bringing yeah. to shore and going back out. I don't know how a lake works, but um, be careful if you're on them. Oh, I haven't uh, been there yet. So the most lakes in the world. Canada. Canada. The, the, I don't have the least lakes in the world, but that imagine but, somewhere in the Middle East. Middle East. Um, oh yeah, Saudi Arabia. The uh, is known as the land of no lakes. They got those 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 oil lakes though. <laughs> a lot of gas or gasoline over there. Trinidad has a pitch lake. Now what is that? The tar that they make your driveway out of oh. the street you drive on. Um, now you are Trinidadian, so you are part of that legacy. I have tar in my veins. Um, now Tar Heels. That's a um. That's the Carolina North Carolina's um, university UNC. Um, Pitch Lake is the largest natural deposit of asphalt in the world. The world. Now my question is. Yeah. Is tar and like asphalt? Is that like rubber where like there is an original source, but now it's like nobody's going really like tap in rubber trees to make rubber it's like synthetic or are they still like we need that they're still pulling it out stuff. of the ground um there must be fake asphalt if yeah. that's what you're asking well they do so, still so, i think it's like never ending i think they just pull it out and okay put it, well because you know like rubber like the rubber trees yeah yeah and it's like oh, that's right. how original rubber is made but right now we just it's just plastic yeah there has to be um substitutes but also i do believe they still use they're still using the, the old, asphalt I, which i saw pitch like in oh, real did you? life, I did. Did you step on it? No, I didn't step on it. I was Is it hot? Afraid. No, as a matter of fact, it looks like a parking lot. It's hard? It, yeah, like, um, I think you can walk out on it. <sighs> I just remember scared. being there, and it had rained. So speaking of, of lakes, on lakes, there were these huge puddles. Uh, so maybe it cooled it or something. Yeah. But it was very unimpressive. It looked it, it looked to me like I was looking at a parking lot. And they're like, no, this is Pitch Lake. Oh, wow. So I guess you could break the crack. Crack the top and yeah. pull out the huh. pull out the stuff, but um, you know it's it's Lake Day on Croak and Crow. Well, it's a Christian podcast. What, is, what are lakes in the Bible? How about wait? Where was Jesus when he walked on water? Okay, so when Jesus walked on water, um, so if you look up Lake in the Bible, you're gonna there's different versions. There's um, all so many versions. King James, we sometimes use New International. We use a lot. I've been using Contemporary English. You love it. You, we have the polls on on Croak and Crow, and you pick a verse every day. And I was looking at your verse, and and I was like, where did this come from? Yeah. And because I couldn't, I couldn't figure it out. I actually thought you had the wrong verse, but you used. Do you remember the name of it? I didn't even look. Oh, it was a new one to me. It was English something, but I was like, oh. So that was another. I just go by the way with the wording, but I'm a I'm a big old New International Version fan. Yeah. So if you put it in there, depending on what version you're looking at, there's going to be different uh, lakes, yeah. right? So sometimes you did you just say when did Jesus walk on water? I said what what body of water? What body of water? That? So I'm not sure about that exact story, but there's a few stories where they're on a boat, they're on a lake, they cross the lake. That's when he cured the um, guy with leprosy. Uh, different times but different books it'll say it's ocean 
Okay. So it's kind of give and take. Give but and take. Um, I think the story of the pigs, that story I just mentioned, the man who, um, he didn't have leprosy. He actually was possessed. Yes. Across and, the lake. And then they, they took the demon and put it into a horde of pigs that ran off a cliff. And fell into the lake. Yes. So that's lake throughout the versions. Okay. Um, so that, that you can depend on. The Pope has a lake. His own personal? Pope Francis. So there's something called Lake Albano. It's in Italy. Okay. And it's, um, what is it called where the our, our U.S. president goes on vacation? Camp David? Different leaders have vacation residences. Yeah, like a, mon- like a what was a, what was Thomas Jefferson's? I, you, Monticello? Mo- Monticello. Monticello. Yeah, Monticello. you're right. Um, they have residences. They don't just go on like Airbnb or whatever. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. And like when you look him up, you're like, he have, what kind of rating? <laughs> I don't know if I want to rent to him. Um, so in there's a, in, on Lake Albano in Italy. This was the um the room. The, this was the papal vacation spot, and um, not every pope stayed there. You saw the two popes. That's where they were. Uh, they were okay. there but pope francis was like no i'm not doing that i'm taking vacay i'm not doing that he turned it into a museum really yeah and he said just let people go and look at it and tell the stories of what's happened here he's not the only pope like i said who's ever turned it down there's been popes yeah. who said i'm not going there there was even um a pope i think during world war ii who opened it to like refugees ah. but yeah pope francis was like i'm not going on vacation to lake albano make a museum out of it you know what a guy i know what a stud maybe you should take a little vacation relax his weary bones um i need you staying i need you sticking around pope francis yes don't leave me he watches so you're all in good company so um just a lake a lake a spiritual lake uh i don't know row around in it what do you got for me a spiritual lake? No, yeah, like I'm just I'm done with my facts. Oh, <laughs> hey, I don't know. I water spiritual, you know. It's nice lakes vacation, um, little little boat ride on a lake. A lake is is um I would say better than an ocean, but you just compared the the Great Lakes to oceans, so they can be tumultuous. Why do you think? Why do you think so much of the stories of Jesus were staged around the lake? He's in the boat. He's out of the boat. He's getting fishermen. He's he's uh walking on water the fluidity of it okay how about that i love it yeah it's fluid formless shapeless like water but he could control it but we couldn't so we let him control it yeah yeah our lives traveling and eating and water is the source of all life yes and there's something beautiful in that there is and um yeah and it's for us you know um we're afraid of water and and jesus wasn't you know and it was a good way to put an example of how we're always protected by him you know when john the baptist was baptizing he said i baptize with water but jesus will come and baptize with fire yeah so it is more for us or more symbolic for us and used by us as earthly humans I yeah find. um and my my thing with lake lakes always is i like the metaphor of just the power or of water and both good and bad. You started this by saying Lake Michigan has the most deaths. Right. Right. But it's like water is, is funny in, in that where it, you know, it can be dangerous with waves and tsunamis and drownings, but it also, we it's a sustenance for life. It's a, right. it's a source of all life. Necessary. And, um, evil. Yeah. Well, not even evil. It's just, it's, it's, always going back to that balance and i think water is perfect because we talk about balance where it's like um good and bad but sometimes it's like in one thing right that leaning too far you know like uh drinking water and drowning are both water going in your mouth you know it's, yeah it's, it's it's and then not drinking the water at all you know it's uh yeah and and maybe like blind faith or as well or believe you know because you said from the you said in the beginning i didn't know how a lake kept the water in it you know it didn't drain out or how it was replenished and it was that invisible source that keeps the lake fresh like if if it was stagnant you wouldn't be able to swim in it or drink from it or you know 
fish from it but so it's fresh even though you from all you can see it just it does just look like a, a, a swimming pool yeah you know? yeah yeah it's weird how did that water get there if you were like wondering that it's just the water's always going to be there yeah within us use it use it <laughs> don't lose it <laughs> all right guys let us know how you feel about lakes down below let us know what the closest lake you live to is and we'll go and we'll ride boats <laughs> um we'll be back tomorrow for a walk through thursday which is quite it's gonna be incredible this week until then go out eat a prune slap an elderly person and take a photo of yourself doing it peace slap an elderly person spencer